So we all know Patrick Starr, famous for being SpongeBob's best friend, having some cool pants, and let's be honest, being dumb. Is mayonnaise an instrument? No, Patrick, mayonnaise is not an instrument. I mean, he's so dumb that the creators of the show decided that he should live under a rock, which is a metaphor for being dumb. But what if I told you that Patrick isn't as stupid as you might think? What if I told you that Patrick was really an extremely smart supervillain that was suffering from memory loss? Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, that can't be true, right? Well, let me explain. So before we dive too deep into this theory, we have to figure out if Patrick is even smart. It's easy to say no because of moments like in the episode The Card, where Patrick doesn't even know how to count. Three, four, what's gonna happen next? Five, this book's good, I'll take it. But strangely, throughout the show, there are moments when Patrick actually seems intelligent. For example, in the episode Squidtastic Voyage, when SpongeBob and Patrick get trapped inside Squidward, Patrick comes up with a plan to get out of Squidward that even surprises Sandy, who's a scientist. We could filter the CO2 through our ballast tanks, refire the engines, and ride the shockwave out of here. Wow. He's right! But the strange thing is, even when Patrick is smart, it doesn't last long. Take this scene for example in the episode Copy Bob Ditto Pants. Life is but a walking shadow. So it's safe to conclude that Patrick does have some moments of intelligence. But the question now is, why don't these moments last? Why does it seem like Patrick can be smart one moment and then dumb again the next? Well, I think I might have the answer. So for this next part, we're going to have to dive into the biology of a starfish. Starfish have a really cool ability to regrow their limbs if they ever get hurt. And of course, with Patrick being a starfish, he has these abilities too. In the episode Karate Star, we see Patrick tear off his hand, only to grow a new one in its place moments later. This is an important detail, because in the episode Patrick Smart Pants, Patrick loses his head and replaces it with a piece of brain coral. However, even though he wears the brain coral for over a week, his body doesn't grow a new head to replace the old head he lost. This must mean that Patrick's head is artificial and isn't part of his body. And there's actually a lot of proof for this theory. For example, in the episode Sing a Song of Patrick, when Patrick tries to think, we see that his brain is made of cogs, just like a machine and not a real brain. And in the episode The Secret Box, we can see sparks flying from Patrick's brain like a malfunctioning computer when he becomes confused. So it's clear to see that Patrick's head isn't real and that he's wearing a high-tech prosthetic. But now the question is, why would Patrick be wearing a prosthetic head? Who made this head? And could this head be an explanation for Patrick's random moments of smartness? So far, we've established that Patrick shows moments of being smart, and we've also established that Patrick's head is a prosthetic. But how do these two things relate? Well, the answer lies in the episode Patrick Smart Pants. In the episode, SpongeBob and Patrick are jellyfishing. When Patrick falls down a cliff and loses his head, SpongeBob mistakes a piece of brain coral for Patrick's head and screws it onto his body. This makes Patrick suddenly become super smart, even outsmarting Sandy by doing complex math problems. But the side effect of Patrick's newfound intelligence is that he can't be friends with SpongeBob because he doesn't enjoy the same things as SpongeBob anymore. This results in Patrick deciding to put his old head on, becoming dumb again to stay friends with SpongeBob. This episode marks the first time in the show when Patrick starts showing signs of being smart. And I don't think that's any coincidence. I believe that the brain coral that Patrick puts on was actually his old supervillain head. This would explain why Patrick suddenly becomes so mean to Spongebob, Sandy and Squidward for no reason. Because when he puts on the head, he becomes evil. It would also provide a theory that Patrick gave up being a supervillain so he could be friends with Spongebob, creating a new head to forget about his old life, so that he would never risk losing Spongebob again. It would also explain why Patrick has random moments of being smart, because he's experiencing memory loss after he switched heads. 
sort of like how Dorian Finding Nemo can still remember small things with her memory loss. Patrick remembers being smart at times, explaining the random smart statements he makes. But if Patrick really is a supervillain suffering from memory loss, shouldn't he still have superpowers? Throughout the show, if you look closely, Patrick has been shown to have various superpowers. One of the main superpowers Patrick displays is super strength. In various episodes, you can see him lifting up his rock with no trouble at all. He also lifts roads and beats people in arm wrestles. In the episode Karate Star, we even see that he has a very strong karate chop, which has the power to destroy buildings. Another superpower that Patrick has is super speed. In the episode The Great Paddy Caper, we see that Patrick is able to run faster than a moving train. In the episode Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 5, we also see that Patrick has the ability to stretch himself like elastic. And let's not forget, Patrick is also shown to be very smart throughout the show. So with all these superpowers, like most superheroes out there, Patrick gets super hungry using so much energy. This could explain why Patrick is seen eating so much food. However, he isn't that overweight. I mean, in the episode What's Eating Patrick? We see Patrick eat 1,000 Krabby Patties, and yet he doesn't get fat. So now that we've established that Patrick does have superpowers, I'm going to explain why Patrick isn't a superhero, but rather a super villain. So the question now is, how do we know Patrick is really a supervillain and not a superhero? Well, one of the most obvious signs is Patrick's interaction with Mermaid Man. Every time Patrick visits Mermaid Man with SpongeBob, Mermaid Man starts randomly screaming evil. This appears to just be a funny gag, but why would it just happen when Patrick is around? Is there something Mermaid Man knows that we don't? In the episode, Spongebob meets the Strangler. When Patrick is accused of being the Strangler, instead of denying it, he instead says, For all we know, uh, he could be the Strangler. I'm the Strangler? No, I should have known! That's a bit strange if you ask me, especially if you're being accused of being someone evil. But these are just minor moments. The real proof comes from the Spongebob video game titled Nighty Nightmare. The game is set inside Patrick's dream where he believes he is a superhero trying to save Bikini Bottom from a villain known as, wait for it, the dreaded Patrick. Now take a second to think about what this says about Patrick's subconscious. Patrick is a hero who needs to save the city from himself. Is this Patrick getting flashbacks to his old villainous life? And if you need any more proof, the dreaded Patrick's evil lair turns out to be Patrick's own house. Patrick clearly sees himself as a villain in this dream, and I believe that's because he truly was a villain, but became so evil that he lost his best friend Spongebob. So using his smart skills, he made a new head for himself that would allow him to forget about his evil past and keep his friendship with Spongebob. He must have discarded his villainous head with the brain coral, and that's why Patrick changed so much when he put it back on pushing Spongebob away again. So that's why by the end of the episode, he chooses to return to a dumber version of himself to save his friendship with Spongebob, just like he did when he was a super villain. But hey, do you believe this theory? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching all you cool jellyfish. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure to check out my previous theories. I'll see you next time. Bye.